gather around Here's some Bible stories Here are some tales from days of old A gift to man more precious than gold Both old and new their lessons still hold true And they're filled with love for me and you Long ago, when Herod was king of Judea, Mary was about to marry Joseph in Nazareth. But before the wedding, the angel Gabriel came down from heaven and told Mary that God was so pleased with her, he was going to give her a baby boy. Oh, how could she have a baby? She isn't even married yet. The angel Gabriel said the Holy Spirit would put the baby in her womb and would be called the Son of God. Mary worried. Will Joseph still want me for his wife? I will tell Joseph, replied Gabriel. He will understand. But Joseph was upset and decided to call off the wedding. Oh. After all, he knew the baby wasn't his. The angel told Joseph, Don't be afraid to marry Mary. She has been chosen by the Lord to have his son Jesus, who will be holy and save the world from its sins. So Joseph took Mary to the temple. Did he marry Mary? Mary? Ma Ma um, did he? Uh-huh. And they set out for Bethlehem a little while later. It was cold in Bethlehem, but when time came for Mary to have her baby, there were no rooms left at the inn. So Joseph and Mary went to a stable, warmed only by the animals. Mm. That night, Mary gave birth to a baby boy. Oh. The animals crowded around to see the infant in the manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Oh, what, what, excuse me, but what is swaddling clothes? Blankets. Oh, oh. In the field, shepherds minding their sheep suddenly saw the sky light up, and God said, I bring you wonderful news. Jesus Christ, the Savior, was born tonight. Look for a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. Then the heavens filled with angels singing, Glory to God and peace on earth. Amazed, the shepherds searched until they found the baby in the manger. And then they knew the angel had told the truth. Uh-huh. The shepherds returned to the field singing the praises of God and telling everyone that Jesus Christ, the Savior, was born. After Jesus was born, three wise men traveled to Jerusalem asking everyone, where is the baby Jesus born to be king of the Jews? His star is in the east. King Herod, afraid that this new king would take over his kingdom, told the wise men, find the baby and then come back and tell me so I can go worship him too. The wise men followed the star to Bethlehem and found Mary with baby Jesus. They fell to their knees and offered presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. An angel said, Herod intends to hurt the baby. Oh, no. So they didn't go back to Jerusalem as Herod had asked, but took a secret route to their own country. King Herod told his soldiers to kill all boy babies in Bethlehem under the age of two to make sure Jesus wouldn't grow up to be king. Yeah, but did they? An angel warned Joseph, so he took his family to Egypt until King Herod died. <sighs> then Joseph took his family to Nazareth, where they could live in peace. Joseph and Mary took baby Jesus to a temple in Jerusalem to be blessed by the Lord. A holy man held the baby and told Mary, This child belongs to God and will save the people of Israel. He will grow to be very powerful, but will make many people angry because he'll tell only the truth. One day, something will happen that will make you very unhappy. Amazed, Joseph and Mary went home. Twelve years later, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus went to Jerusalem for Passover dinner. Afterward, they set out for home in a caravan with so many people, it was a whole day before anybody noticed that Jesus was gone. His frantic parents found him in the temple with the teachers, who were all surprised at his wisdom. Your daddy and I have been very worried, not knowing where you were, said his mother. I'm sorry, answered Jesus, but didn't you know I would be doing my father's business? Mary and Joseph took him back with them to Nazareth, where Jesus grew up to be loved by many. Long before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah predicted that a man would appear to prepare the world for the Lord's arrival. Jesus was about 30 when it happened. 
What happened? A man named John baptized people in the River Jordan and told them to confess their sins. He said, He who has two coats, let him share with one who has none. And he who has food, let him do the same. Well, people thought John was the one for whom they'd been waiting. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> but John said, There is another man wiser than I. I baptize you with water, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then Jesus came to be baptized. But John knew who he was and said, It is you who should baptize me. Jesus insisted, so John baptized him. The heavens opened wide. The Spirit of God landed like a dove on his shoulder. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. After Jesus was baptized by John, God sent him into the wilderness for 40 days and nights. There Jesus had nothing to eat. And he was hungry. Suddenly the devil appeared and said, If you're the son of God, why don't you turn these stones into bread? Then you'll have plenty to eat. But Jesus wasn't fooled. A man doesn't live on bread alone, he replied. The word of God is just as important. Well, the devil didn't know what to say to that. So he put Jesus on the high roof of the temple saying, Since you're the son of God, jump off the roof and see if your father catches you. But Jesus smiled. No, it is wrong to test God's love. You must have faith in him. Now the devil knew if he could tempt Jesus, he could win over the rest of the people. So from the highest mountain, he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. Worship me, he said, and I will give it all to you. Get out of here, Satan. Jesus said, I will only worship the Lord my God, and him alone will I serve. One day on the shore of a lake, crowds gathered to see Jesus cure the sick and speak the word of God. They pressed so close he couldn't move. Jesus got into Simon's boat and asked the fishermen to push off shore so he could talk to the people from there. When he was through preaching, Jesus told Simon to lower his nets for a catch. Simon said, Master, we didn't catch a single fish here all night, but if you say so, we'll try again. Well, Simon lowered the nets. And immediately they were filled with big fish. We couldn't manage alone, so the brothers John and James brought their boat to help. But still, there were so many fish, the boats almost sank. Astonished, Simon, John, and James fell to their knees. Oh, Lord, said Simon, you shouldn't be here with me. I am a sinner. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. Leave your boats and come with me. Help me catch men instead of fish. So Simon, John, and James became Jesus' first disciples and went with him to preach God's word to the world. As Jesus traveled, his disciples followed him. He called 12 of them apostles and gave them power to heal the sick, forgive sins, and spread his teachings. There was Simon, whom Jesus renamed Peter, his brother Andrew, James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and another James. Also Thaddeus, Matthew, and Simon the Patriot. Then there was Judas Iscariot, who would later become a traitor. That's bad, huh? Jesus taught the apostles a new way of thinking. The poor would own the kingdom of God, the hungry would have plenty to eat, and the sad would find heaven a happy place. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> Love your enemies, said Jesus. If someone hits you on the cheek, don't hit him back. Turn the other cheek. And if someone takes your coat, offer him your shirt as well. Treat people the way you want to be treated. It's not up to you to decide who's right and who's wrong. Be kind, merciful, and forgiving to everyone. This is my gospel. Amen. <laughs> In Galilee, Jesus and his disciples were invited to a wedding. Jesus' mother Mary was there as well. The guests were standing around drinking toast to the young bride and groom when suddenly Mary whispered to Jesus, Son, there's no more wine. Is there anything we can do to help? Jesus told the servants, fill those big jars with water. Next, he instructed, serve some of it to the guests. The servants thought it was a strange idea to give water to people and pretend it was wine, but they did as they were told. However, when the water was poured into the cups, it had turned into good dark red wine. Well, nobody knew what had happened except the servants, who were astounded. Jesus' disciples saw all of this and knew he had caused a miracle to happen. They believed that he must be the Son of God. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus told the people of Nazareth, where he'd been raised, that he'd been sent by God to help the poor and cure the sick. But they all knew Jesus. Isn't this Joseph's son, they said? Yeah. What makes him so special? Jesus said, because you watched me grow up, you can't take me seriously. No prophet is ever welcome in his own country. But the prophets of old told you to wait for me. Now I'm here and you refuse to believe. The angry people yelled, Who are you to tell us what we should or shouldn't believe? They dragged Jesus to a high cliff to throw him over. But with the power of God behind him, Jesus walked off down the road and no one dared touch him. Oh, what a relief! In the next town where he wasn't known, people listened to him. But one man shouted, Have you come to destroy us? Well, Jesus knew that the devil was hiding in the man oh. and called, Be silent, come out of him. The evil spirit ran and the man fell. Now word spread all over Israel that Jesus had great powers. Oh. A little girl was dying. Oh, no. Her father went to Jesus and fell at his feet crying. Please come and help her. As Jesus followed the father, a woman reached out and touched Jesus' robe. Though he didn't see the woman, Jesus felt the power of the touch. He said, who touched me just now? Trembling with fear, the woman said, I have been bleeding from this wound for 12 years, but the moment I touched your robe, the bleeding stopped. Thank you, Jesus. Don't thank me, said Jesus. It was your own faith that healed you. When they arrived at the sick child's house, the servants rushed out and told the father that his little girl was dead. Oh, no, no, not dead, not dead. But Jesus insisted, no, no, she's only sleeping. Oh. He went inside, and in a moment, the little girl was wide awake and healthy. Jesus told the happy father, because of your faith in me, your daughter's well again. One day, Jesus and his disciples went up into the hills, followed by 5,000 people. Jesus was worried that they would go hungry. He said to his disciple, Philip, how can we feed all these people? Well, Andrew spotted a little boy with two fishes and five loaves of bread. But Jesus took the two fishes and five loaves of bread, thanked the Lord for them, and had the disciples hand them out to the hungry people. Each time they reached into the basket, there were more fishes and plenty of bread, and soon all 5,000 had eaten their fill. And when the disciples collected the leftovers, there was still enough to fill 12 baskets. Impressed by this miracle, the people said, Jesus must be the true Christ who has come to us. We should make him our king. Well, Jesus heard these words and slipped away by himself because he didn't want to be king. Jesus told his disciples to row their boat across the Sea of Galilee, and he would meet them later on the other side. He climbed into the hills to pray to God. But when he looked out over the water, he saw that the men were rowing against the wind. Oh. They were only halfway across by dark and so tired. Suddenly, Peter saw a figure walking across the water toward the boat. What is that? He whispered. It's a man, said another. A, a, a man can't walk on the water? It must be a ghost. The figure came closer and said... Don't be afraid. It is I, Jesus. Lord, said Peter, if it is you, let me walk in the water too. And Peter walked over the water and stood beside Jesus. But then Peter looked down at the waves under his feet and got scared. I'm sinking, he said. Immediately, Jesus took Peter's hand and stopped him from sinking. Oh, you of little faith, said Jesus. Why do you doubt me? Jesus led Peter to the boat. The wind died down and they rowed to shore. Does the Bible tell you what you have to do to get to heaven, huh? Yes, Lamb Chop. It says you must love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. What neighbor? Jesus told this story about that. Oh, good. <laughs> A traveler was beaten by robbers who left him half dead. A priest saw the bleeding man but didn't stop. Another passerby didn't want to be troubled either. But a man from Samaria tore his own robes to make bandages and carried the man to an inn. He gave them money for room and food. Take care of this poor fellow until he's well, said the Samaritan. And if it costs more, I'll pay you when I return. Lamb Chop? Y yes, yes. Which of these three men do you think was a neighbor to the traveler? 
It was the good guy who tried to, the Samaria, Samaritan. Samaritan. Uh, him, him, him. <laughs> and Jesus said, you do the same for others. Gotcha. <laughs> Jesus told this story. A man divided his money between his two sons. The younger ran away to another town where he wasted his share on silly things. Mm -hmm. Soon he had nothing left, and he was very unhappy to have to work long and hard feeding pigs, making almost nothing. Mm. One day he said, My father pays his hired men twice what I'm getting. I'll go home and work for him. Well, his father ran to meet him, hugged him, and gave him his best robe, crying, You're home. Let's have a party. The older son complained. It's not fair. I've worked for you all these years, and you've never given me a party. The father replied, I love you too, son, but we must celebrate because your brother was gone as though he were dead, and now he's here again. Jesus said, you see, there's more joy over finding one lost lamb than over the 99 who have never gone astray. Oh, well, when you put it in terms of lambs, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> When Lazarus became really sick in Bethany, his sisters Mary and Martha sent a message to their friend Jesus, who was in another town preaching, to ask for his help. Jesus said, I will save Lazarus from death and show the power of the Son of God at the same time. But Jesus' disciples cried, The Pharisees and high priest in Bethany think you're a fake master. They will stone you to death. Jesus wouldn't listen. Outside of Bethany, Mary, Martha, and a crowd of mourners met Jesus and told him that Lazarus had died four days before and was buried in a tomb. Show me where he's buried, said Jesus. So they opened the tomb, and Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! To everybody's astonishment, the dead man appeared as alive and healthy as anybody. That is astonishment! Oh, it's another miracle, isn't it? Some of the mourners fell to their knees to worship Jesus, but others, frightened, ran to the Pharisees and high priests to tell what they'd seen. The Pharisees were strict religious men, and when Jesus claimed to be Savior of all the people, were they upset. When people began to follow Jesus instead of the Pharisees, oh, they really got angry. They complained to the priests. Jesus performs miracles. Why, well, he brought Lazarus back to life. If we let him continue, everyone will believe in him. The high priests agreed. If Jesus dies, the people will come back to the old prophets. So they plotted Jesus' death and told anyone who knew where Jesus was to let them know so they might arrest him. Well, Jesus had gone to dinner with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Mary bathed his feet with expensive perfume and dried them with her hair. The apostle Judas said, Why waste that perfume? We could sell it and give the money to the poor. Mind you, Judas didn't really care about the poor. Yeah, he wanted the money for himself. But Jesus said, Let her be. You will always have the poor. You won't always have me. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus told the twelve apostles, When we reach the city, my enemies will arrest and condemn me to death. They will nail me to a cross until I die. But three days later, I will rise from the dead. Will he? As they neared Jerusalem, crowds followed, praising Jesus. And two blind men called out, Have mercy on us, Lord. Filled with pity, Jesus touched their eyes. Immediately, they could see. No kidding. Oh, I just love miracles. Near the city, Jesus told two apostles, look for a donkey tied to a fence. Bring it to me. And if anyone tries to stop you, tell them it is for the Lord. They brought the donkey back, and Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem. Now the crowd shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The people in the city asked, who is this man? And the crowds answered, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth. He is the son of God. Alarmed at Jesus' popularity, the priests and Pharisees were plotting to kill Jesus. But before they could think of a plan, the apostle Judas Iscariot made the high priest an offer. Give me 30 pieces of silver, and I'll hand Jesus over to you. On the day of the Passover feast, Jesus told Peter and John, Follow a man carrying a jug of water to his house, and ask in which room we may eat the Passover meal. There you must prepare the supper. Later, Jesus sat with his disciples at the table and said, One of you is going to betray me. They each cried, Oh, Lord, will it be me? Jesus responded, 
the one who is a traitor will wish he'd never been born. Jesus passed bread saying, eat this, it is my body. He poured wine and said, drink this, it is the blood I will shed to save the world from its sins. They ate the bread and drank the wine. And Jesus said, the next time we have wine together, will be in God's heaven. After Passover supper, Jesus walked with his disciples in the garden at Gethsemane. Tonight, he said, you will all desert me. Peter said, no, I'll do it. No, I said, Peter, even if the others run away, I'll stick by you. Jesus replied, Peter, before the rooster crows at dawn, you will swear three times that you don't know me. But Peter insisted, I will stay with you even if it means dying. Peter, John, and James saw Jesus trembling. I am troubled because of what is about to happen, he said. Keep watch with me. Jesus prayed, Father, please don't make me go through this terrible thing. I'll do it if that's what you want, but I'd rather not. But Jesus saw that the three disciples were asleep. Hey, wake up, you guys. He prayed again for strength to bear the suffering he would soon face. The disciples were still asleep. He prayed a third time, then awakened them, saying, Watch now, and you will see the Son of God captured by sinners. No. The time has come. Look. Armed men surrounded Jesus and his disciples. Judas went up to Jesus and kissed him so the men would know who to capture. Peter drew his sword, but Jesus said, Don't show your sword unless you're ready to die by it. Besides, don't you know that I could ask my father to send out an army of angels to protect me? All the disciples ran away except Peter, who watched as the men dragged Jesus to the high priest who demanded, Are you Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Jesus replied, You have said it. The furious priest all shouted, For that you will die. A woman saw Peter and said, He's one of the disciples. But Peter protested, I never saw him before. That's one. Then a man pointed, You are one of them. Again, Peter denied it. That's two. Finally, a third person insisted, That's Jesus' friend. When Peter shook his head, Three. Well, he heard the rooster crow and he wept, for he knew Jesus' prophecy had come true. <sighs> Declared guilty by the high priest, Jesus was taken to the palace of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. Pilate said, if this man's broken the law, you punish him. But the priest insisted, it's against our religion to kill a man. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you really the king of the Jews as they say you are? Jesus responded, my kingdom is not on earth but in heaven. I was put on earth to teach the truth. Anyone who loves truth will listen to me. Pilate told the crowd he believed Jesus was innocent of any crime, but they shouted, Kill him! So, to avoid a riot, Pilate had his soldiers whip Jesus. They put a crown of thorns and a robe on him, and then Pilate showed Jesus to the crowd, saying, See, I have punished him, but I still can't find any reason to put him to death. He must die, demanded the priest. He says he's the son of God, and that's a serious crime. So, the priest got the Roman soldiers to take Jesus to his death. The soldiers made Jesus and two robbers each carry a big wooden cross through Jerusalem. As the soldiers nailed all three to their crosses, Jesus said, Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. They stood the crosses in a row, Jesus in the middle. The priests and Pharisees shouted, If he's the Son of God, why doesn't his Father save him now? And the soldiers called, You're good at miracles. Let's see you get down off that cross. Boy, where's a good miracle when you need one? Even one of the robbers joined in. But the second said, leave him alone. This man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, remember me when you reach your kingdom, Lord. In spite of his misery, Jesus replied, the truth is, today you will be with me in paradise. Suddenly, the sky grew dark. Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then he died. Oh. After Jesus died on the cross, a loyal disciple named Joseph got Pilate's permission to remove the body from the cross. Joseph carefully wrapped Jesus in a new linen cloth and carried him to his own tomb. That was nice of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There he laid the body and rolled a heavy boulder over the entrance so no one could get in. Good. 
Women who had followed Jesus in his travels gathered nearby to mourn his death. This is a very sad story. Next morning, the priest and the Pharisees told Pilate, Jesus said he would rise from the dead in three days. We think the tomb should be guarded so his disciples don't steal the body and claim that by some miracle, Jesus had come back to life. That would make people believe Jesus' lies about being the Son of God. So Pilate posted soldiers at the tomb with instructions to keep everyone away until after the third day. On the third day after Jesus was crucified, as Mary Magdalene and another woman approached the tomb, an angel, glowing like lightning, rolled the boulder away from the door of the tomb. The soldiers guarding the door were so frightened, they fainted. The angel told the women, Jesus was crucified, but he isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Oh, like he said. The angel showed them that the tomb was empty except for the linen cloth that had been wrapped around the body. Go quickly, said the angel. Tell his disciples what you have seen and that Jesus will visit them soon. Suddenly, Jesus himself appeared in front of the women. When they realized it really was Jesus, they fell to their knees. Meanwhile, the guards at the tomb woke up from their faint and ran to the temple to tell what had happened. The priest paid the soldiers to keep the truth a secret. They said, tell everyone that his disciples stole the body while you were asleep. Don't tell the people what really happened, they said, or they will worship Jesus forever. When Mary Magdalene told the disciples about Jesus rising from the dead, they thought she was making it up. Peter and John looked and found the tomb open and the body gone. But John now believed, but Peter wasn't sure. That night, the disciples met and talked about what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus was there, and they all trembled, thinking he was a ghost. Jesus said, why can't you believe I'm really here? Look at the holes the nails made in my hands and feet. Touch me. Ghosts don't have warm skin as I do. I told you many times that I would be crucified, and that on the third day I would rise again and walk with you. And I have taught you that love and forgiveness should be preached to the people of the world. Now it is up to you to spread the word. But Jesus blessed his disciples, and then he went up to heaven. With joy in their hearts, the disciples returned to Jerusalem and thanked God for letting them know Jesus.